the Golden State Warriors pulled off an unbelievable comeback to take game two of the Western Conference Finals, lead the series 2-0, and I still kind of can't decide if Dallas choked this away or if Golden State just is that good and just happens to be that that fortunate when it comes to because the first half of this game it looked like we were heading to just another blowout I was getting ready to do a video that was gonna just be like look we need these blowouts to stop obviously the series is tied now longer series better for I was ready to just get on here and just spout all sorts of conspiracy nonsense and then Steph Curry said no and it's crazy. So the, the Dallas Mavericks had a perfect half of basketball. The first half of this game is exactly what a team wants to happen. I could not believe all of the things that broke Dallas's way in this in this first half. They were attacking uh, direct defenders. They had Luka driving straight at Andrew Wiggins. They completely abandoned the pick and roll, which is something that they continually tried to catch Kevon Looney in in game one. And they just completely abandoned it. They changed how they were defending um, the Warriors. It was just, it was a lot of, of interior driving and kicking out. And, and the players that were missing shots in game one were absolutely hitting everything they could in the start of this game. Uh, at halftime, Jalen Brunson, Luka Doncic, and Reggie Bullock combined for 57 points. The Warriors had 58 it looked like it was going to be part two of that Phoenix elimination game and Dallas was just going to keep rolling. They were getting great contributions from guys like Dorian Finney-Smith and Maxi Kleber, who didn't have a, a bucket until the third quarter, but was really doing a, a good job staying out of foul trouble and impacting shots on defense. He was really making the Warriors players have to work for it. And the Warriors were just missing shot after shot it felt like they could not get a rhythm going they were sloppy with the ball Draymond Green was just committing turnover after turnover the first half they combined both teams combined for 23 threes they were everyone was just getting shots up it was it was just a lot but it was favoring Dallas Dallas was getting exactly what they wanted so then the third quarter comes along and both teams for whatever reason just completely flipped their strategy Draymond Green and Steph Curry were both in foul trouble. They had three fouls apiece to start the third quarter. Rather than attack both of those guys, the Mavericks went back to that pick and roll. They didn't do it really at all in the first half and then just decided to go back to it in the second half of a 19-point game that they were firmly in control of. They just completely veered off of what had been working. And for the Warriors... They did something that I still can't believe they, they audibled to, which is they just started attacking the rim. They were like, all right, well, we're going to try to just get fouls and stop the clock and get some points and see what happens. And they did that enough times. They were able to, to you know, kind of start to claw back into it. And then Steph Curry went all Steph Curry and just started getting nuclear from three. And once that happens, you're not out of a game. We've seen the Warriors blow teams out in the third quarter. We've seen them cut major deficits in half or come all the way back from them. And this was that vintage Warriors team here. But there was one big difference. There was one thing that really coalesced this comeback to me for the Warriors. And that is Kevon Looney coming in for Draymond Green. Draymond Green picked up two quick fouls in the third quarter. He was more interested in yelling at the refs and pushing their buttons than he was in playing the game. There were so many times in the first half where he would just get up and start yelling at the officials and the team would get back and he would still be talking to the officials. He had one technical early and then just kind of seemed to be pushing his luck to see if he could get that second one. So he had something to be pissed about. Like, I, I think I tweeted even like, he just sees them hitting all these threes. He sees Dallas blowing them out and he's just over it. But like, all of that distraction, as soon as he went to the bench with his fifth foul and Kevon Looney came in, the entire team's composure shifted because Kevon Looney's not going to argue a call. He was just getting back on defense. He was just altering shots. He was just grabbing rebounds. He was just scoring a playoff career high in points. He did all of the dirty work that a traditional center would be in position to do. And he filled that role and the ball stayed moving like it does with Draymond in running the point center position. 
and it all worked out perfectly. Steph was getting these open looks. Jordan Poole was just punishing people off the dribble. There was an incredible moment where he blew by Davis Bertans and then just ran the whole way back up the court taunting Bertans. Incredible. I love Jordan Poole. Like, stuff like this. This is what you love to see. But really, everything changed. The Warriors in that second half went on a 51-25 to run to not only bring the game back, to put them back, to get the lead, but to make it a double-digit lead for themselves. It was a major swing, and the bulk of it was with Kevon Looney in for Draymond. I think they said it was like 32 to, to 10 or something like that was the run with Looney in for Draymond. Draymond came back in and then subsequently got another stupid foul to foul out of the game. He tried to, I guess, pick Luka Doncic's pocket to get um, a quick steal off of a made Warriors basket, but he just ran right into Luka, and there, there we go. There's his sixth foul. And for his part, I feel terrible for Luka Doncic because this was a perfect game for him, for the Mavericks for a half. Like, he finishes, I believe, 43 points, uh, eight or nine assists, had six assists in the first quarter. He was dominating in that first quarter. He had, like, 18 and six. It looked like he could not miss. He... He did everything, and after after his inefficiency in game one, it really looked like he had taken it to heart and was like, okay, okay, I'm going to take this, this responsibility. I'm going to lead us there. Guys, follow me. And for the start of the game, they did, and it's not like the, the Mavericks just suddenly forgot how to shoot. They just started abandoning the, the plan that got them there. And I'm really curious to hear, I haven't heard Jason Kidd yet talk about what the decisions were to make those adjustments, what he saw, what they were thinking, but it's really, it's surprising. It's surprising because with a team like Golden State, you know it can flip. You know it can change in an instant. Like, you have to, whatever's working, you have to just beat them into submission and be done with it because if you don't, they're going to have the chance to come back. The firepower, the defensive threat, like the ability to turn it on when they want is a scary thing because they seem to be like the only team that can just do it without any type of repercussion. Because a lot of times you hear, oh, they think they can just turn it on and then it goes terribly for, you know, a team like the Lakers, for instance, who were like, let's conserve all our energy until winning time and until the playoffs so we're good. And then it's like, oh, you missed the playoffs entirely because you just gave away a ton of really winnable games. So there's a double-edged sword there, and I don't know if the Warriors can just do that for the rest of the playoffs and go win a title. Because this game got out of hand quick because Dallas was finally getting fast break opportunities. They were turning the ball over from the Warriors uh, with pretty pretty great ease. I want to say the first quarter was a 6-1 to one, uh, turnover battle with... Dallas really protecting the ball well compared to game one and the Warriors just continuing that loose sloppy play and I just I wonder if it's something that they actually like talk about like when Steve Kerr's like yeah we work on the turnovers and then all the ball security and it's like do you because at some point working on it every day you would think it would get better like you'd like think they'd be more careful with it but like it's like the the attitude of like I don't even know. It's the attitude of the person who knows that like they're that good. They're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can you can take the ball. We'll spot you ten. We'll be back. We'll spot you nineteen second half point lead. Well, and we'll 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 be back. And it just keeps playing off. It like paying off for them. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Um, Clay Thompson too. It feels like Clay Thompson is one of those dudes who like can have like the most pedestrian game up until the last four minutes. And then just go lights out and make all the plays he needs to. He's dunking on people. He's doing all sorts. Like, he's just there. He's He lives for those big moments, and I love it. It's so cool, and I'm so glad he's back. Um, Dallas side again, I don't want to, like, harp too much. They blew a 19-point second-half lead. There is that. But this was the game you wanted from the team. Like, that's, that's I think, what, they're, what they should be most upset about is they had a 19-point lead in the second half. Luka Doncic was out of his mind. Jalen Brunson was having one of the most efficient games of his young playoff career. You were getting a huge boost from Reggie Bullock hitting all those open threes, which he can be a streaky shooter too. 
at halftime they were the only three people in double digits and they had a night on the team in double digits scoring wise and they had a 19 point lead like that's how well it was going for these players spencer dinwiddie continues to really struggle and not just struggle but like not look for his shot he's really forcing the issue in weird spots and then he's not taking those open shots he's like making it harder for himself and i don't know why it's really really weird um and so this series ships back to to dallas and that brings me to the last point i'm going to make which is the series is moving back to dallas golden state's up 2-0 they look like they can just basically turn it on and blow teams out when they feel like it and yet i have no confidence that that's how this is going to go because dallas just did this exact same thing to the phoenix suns they just went down two games to none went back to dallas turned it around went back to phoenix with a newfound confidence and efficiency blew phoenix out a couple times got it back home and then you go to game seven and you see what happens in game seven on the road for dallas so i'm not saying that this is a this series is over i think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens now in game three because Dallas's confidence and their um, state of mind heading into this is going to be interesting. They can come out, backs against the wall, we have a, a point to prove again. Or, you know, collapsing like that, like blowing a 19-point lead is, is a tough thing, I'm sure, to, to come to grips with and to, to deal with. So it's going to be really interesting to see if they can build off of it or if this starts to become like a thing that they're haunted by. If, if they never get those games again from these contributors... If they just continually spend the time letting those role players take as many shots as they can, hoping that they can get a hot streak to give Lucas some support, it, it's it's going to be a really interesting um, line for them to walk to try to hit that balance and to try to get what they need without limiting what makes Lucas so great while also containing the Warriors because Dallas did a great job on, on the Warriors defensively for the first half and for part of the third quarter too. The fourth quarter, Golden State shot 78% from the field. They just could not miss. And they've had those super efficient quarters already in the playoffs. And it's in the third and the fourth quarters when they're, you know, blowing teams out, putting teams away, making a lead insurmountable, coming back from a little deficit. Like, they have shown an ability to just flip it and get these open shots, and everyone on their team can hit those shots. Like, you had every single perimeter player for the Warriors was hitting shots and then was also looking in to hit Kevon Looney in the in the open passing lanes for wide open dunks, for in one putbacks. For, like, it was crazy. I've never seen, like, well, I've se I say that, but I've seen it because the Warriors keep doing it. Like, it's incredible to watch it when it's all going well. And like I said in the last one, like, that's what makes it so frustrating when it's not, is it's like, we know how good you can play. Just do it. Do, like, do it all the time. And I know it sounds in, like a weird, like, I, and you can't be perfect all the time, but, like, we've seen it. We've seen it so many times. So, I don't, we'll see what happens. The series shifts back to Dallas. Uh, game three will be on Sunday. Tomorrow we have, or today, I guess, Saturday. I'm recording this Friday night, but Saturday we have Eastern Conference Finals game three. Uh, Boston, Miami in Boston. Really curious to see how that goes too. If Boston has just kind of figured it out or if Miami can come in and steal home court advantage back real quick. We'll see how that goes. Um, if you have thoughts on either games, um, either the game three today or game two between the Warriors and the Mavericks, please just let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on um, the teams, on the games, on if this is a Dallas loss or a golden state win more uh please let me know your thoughts uh thank you very much for watching enjoy the games today and uh have a good weekend